guys, this is your, our first episode with the Toothless Donkey Brewing Company. Today we're going to make this red ale from the Brewer's Best Kit that we have here. It's one of the ones that we offer on our website. Take a look at what we got inside here. We got uh, two canisters of your concentrate syrup. It's a semi all grain kit, so it's not quite all grain, but it's pretty close. So you have your bag of uh, crushed grains, crushed caramel and crushed chocolate malt. You got your hop additives, and we are using dry yeast. So to start it off, we're going to bring our temperature of our kettle here up to about 165-168. Uh, I used to do a little bit higher just because it will drop down temperature. If when you're steeping, you're going to turn your, uh, your heat source off. So we got the water in there, and it's uh, coming temperature right now. It's at about 128, so we're just going to wait a little bit, and we're going to start adding our additions. Hey Graham, what happens if you don't have a pot that size? What can you do? Well, before I bought this big beast of a pot, I had one that was about probably less than half the size. So what I did was I just made my wort as with the water I had available, and then I transferred my wort after cooling it into my glass carboy, like this one here. It only filled up to about that high. I don't know if you can see on there. I'll put it up here for you. And then the rest of it filled up to the uh, five and a half gallons. I just used uh, sanitized water, and that did the trick. Alright, we'll go through a couple of the uh, ingredients and uh, different tools we'll use through the brewing process. We'll start off with our sanitizer. It's called uh, Star Sands from uh, Five Star Chemicals. It's a uh, no rinse sanitizer, so you can, well, let's say you can drink it, but you don't have to rinse it off your equipment when you're sanitizing everything. I like to use a spray ball. I just put a few drops in there, and I literally just spray everything as I'm going along, keeps everything nice and uh, sanitary for us. We have a few different uh, thermometer options. You can have this one that floats in the water. It's pretty handy. I've got an old meat thermometer from my old chef days. But right now I'm using my uh, turkey one that I use for uh, when I make my turkey. It's got an alarm that goes off in case I'm not paying attention. It comes in pretty handy. And once you're done your uh, your warp process, it's always good to check out your uh, original gravity so you can measure and get your, um, you know, once you're done the fermenting process, you can get your alcohol content. So this is a hydrometer, basically you fill this up with your wort, plop that in there, and then you take your reading off of there, and I have a little app on my phone from Brewer's Friend. So basically just punch it all in there, and then when you're done fermenting, you put your numbers in there and you get your alcohol content. It's very simple. So we also have our grains here, all cut out. It's got your uh, crushed caramel and chocolate malt. And we have your U.S. Golden Hops. These are one of your additives, and our other one is U.S. Fungal hops. The yeast we're using today is just a Nottingham uh, ale yeast. Pretty, pretty basic stuff. All right, now that our uh, water is almost up to temperature, we can uh, get our grains ready to be steeped. I want to grab the uh, steeping bag out of there. We can fill it up with, uh, with our crushed grains we have here. Basically, it's just your normal cheesecloth kind of bag. Just open it up. I like to get a little plate underneath just to keep my mess to a minimum. Let's pour that in there. That is pretty much it. Oh, it's ready. So basically, just take your uh, grain bag. Tied in a loose knot around the end. You don't really need to have them, but I do just to keep it all neat and tidy. Over to your brew pot. And just get it right into the water. And just tie a little loose knot around the handle. Make sure you turn your heat off. And just let it steep for about 45 minutes. Now that our grain bag is in our water, since we're not using a mash tun, it's good to move it around a little bit, make sure you get all those sugars and uh, flavors out of, your, out of your grains there. So kind of move it around every few minutes, just like that. So we've steeped our grain for about 30 minutes. We left it a little longer than it says on the instructions, so like get as much sugar and uh, flavor out of there as possible. So looks like we've got a really nice color to our wort so far. Looks good. <laughs> so now basically, when you set up at your home, you want to try to make sure you have a cabinet over top of your uh, brew pot. 
what I like to do is take my steeping bag, just tie it right to there, and just let it drip until uh, you're pretty much done. You know, make sure you maximize all the extraction out of your grains. So now we're going to start uh, get ready for our hop addition. So what basically you're going to do is you got to bring your wort up to a nice rolling boil. So you want to uh, turn your heat source back up and then pretty much just sit and wait until it gets all the way up. You can tell, yeah, we've got a bit, of wait, a bit of a ways to go. All right, so now that we've got a uh, gentle boil going, we're going to add up some of the ingredients. The first is the LME, which is the, the liquid malt extract, which is from uh, malted barley. You can see that, it's very, very syrupy. So we just pour that in. Uh, the only thing is you want to be stirring this pretty much constantly while you're adding it. So what we'll do is we keep uh, stirring this and uh, as we add it and then uh, we bring it back to a boil and the next part we'll be adding the first hops. Here's a little trick for, uh, we're going to take a little bit of uh, wort with a turkey baster. So we're just going to take a little bit of wort with this turkey baster here and put in uh, just a little bit of water to dilute it so the sugar levels aren't quite that high. And we'll explain a little later on why we did that. <laughs> Alright, we're back and it's boiling quite nicely after adding the LME. So now what we're doing is adding the first hops which are the golden hops and they smell fantastic. We're just going to sprinkle them in. But remember, if you're using a smaller pot, watch out for boil over because it will boil up with the, uh, with the hops in it. And that's it. Uh, now we're going to let it uh, boil for 55 minutes before we add the next hops. Alright, we're back. It's been 55 minutes uh, boiling with the one set of hops. And now we're going to add the second hops, which are the Fuggle hops. So again, slow sprinkle, and that's it. We boil for five minutes and we stop the boil, and uh, that'll be it for the boiling. All right, so earlier you saw me take a little bit of our wort out of our uh, boil there with my turkey baster. Basically what I did was I added some of our wort with some uh, sanitized water to dilute it. I'm going to get our yeast ready. So basically I'm doing this so when we do add our yeast to our fermenter later on, we won't shock it and, you know, kill our yeast. So I kind of start getting a little bit used to the sugar levels. So I just do like that. And just let it sit for a bit until we're ready to rock. And that's it. Alright, so now it's time to cool down our wart. So typically I just like to use this coil, copper coiled uh, wart chiller. Works pretty good. You can also get the plate chiller. These are usually more cost effective for your uh, home brewing needs. So I've got my bottle of uh, sanitizer here to soak the whole thing. Just to make sure that all the bad stuff is off. This is the only part that's going to go onto the wart, so it's the only time to crack the sanitary. So a quick little spray, just get any, any residue or any other thing that might have fallen on it. Alright. That's all clean for us now. We'll get Marty to plop that into our, uh, we're gonna drip on the floor, it's all good. <laughs> so plop that into the uh, brew pot there. Perfect. So it's very easy to use. Basically, I'm just gonna attach this onto here and then put the other end of the drain. And that's it. We'll run that, we won't bore you with that part, we'll run that and then the water. Cool water runs around the coil and cools off our wart for us and it works great. So it's always a good idea to either have a clean sink full of sanitizer and water or have a bucket full of sanitizer and water. So we're about to start transferring our wart to our fermenter. So it's always a good idea to run a bunch of sanitizer through your, your tubes. Make sure everything's all nice and clean because we're not going to bring it back up to temperature again. So I'll hand this over to Marty now. So 
basically we have a waste bucket on the ground there. Put one end into there. Because when they get all that sanitizer out, you don't want that to go in the carboy. And just start pumping it a couple times. Oh yeah, look at that. Alright, that's good there. So we got it out, we got our nice nice board in there, so we're gonna start transferring that to our carboy. Pretty good, it smells pretty good too. Um, so I'll take this out. So I get a couple of little last minute little pumps there to get all the uh, remaining uh, remnants of our wart in there. It's okay to get a little bit of uh, you know, hops and other stuff in there because you'll be transferring again later anyway, so it's all good. All right, now we have to add our yeast. We have it in our uh, sanitizer and water. Get that there. I'm getting ready to dump our, our yeast in there. See how we, it looks nice and creamy with our, uh, we prepared it with our uh, half a wort, half a water from earlier. And it's reacting nicely. I think our throwback candle soups cup uh, helped out as well. Alright, so we got that going. So on there you can see it already starting to react in there with our, with the sugar. So basically, your yeast eats the sugar from your wort and pretty much Farts and then turns into alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take our airlock, fill it about halfway with water. So you want to have water and sanitizer in there just in case something goes back in. You want everything nice and clean. So that's all ready to go. Getting ready to put that in. Now you want to be careful. You don't want to push in too hard. Just enough to have a nice little seal there. That looks pretty good right there. Perfect, and that's it. And while this transferring, we took a little sample with our uh, turkey baster and our uh, hydrometer. And it's actually right on par. It's at uh, 48 on our uh, measurement here, which will give us about uh, hopefully 5% alcohol once we're all done. So you make sure you take your original gravity um, readings before you do this, because you got to take your final one afterwards to get your uh, proper measurement. It's the day after our brew day. As you can see, the yeast is doing its job. Alright, so it's been about eight days since uh, our brew day, and our uh, beer here stopped fermenting, or stopped bubbling about uh, 48 hours ago. You always want to wait about 48 hours before, uh, so you know that the uh, fermentation process has stopped. Uh, we just got upstairs from sanitizing all of our bottles. I'll show you a couple of clips about that. I just want to basically rinse them. Talking with some sanitizer and water, we use star sand and we put it on our uh, bottling tree here. <laughs> Alright, so we're not going to uh, force carve our uh, beer because I don't have a kegging setup up at my house. So we use this, something called priming sugar. Basically what we do is we boil this in about uh, three cups of water. Then we're going to add it to our bottling bucket, we'll cool it down a bit, and then we're going to transfer our beer into our bottling bucket and mix it together. And then once you pour that in the bottles, it'll sit in there for about two weeks and then it'll be carved. And it works, uh, it works pretty good. All right, so we're about to start transferring from our uh, fermenter to our bottling bucket. But you want to make sure first, before you do that, you want to uh, run some beer through your line to push all the sanitizer out of into your uh, other bucket. Yeah, I call it my garbage bucket. So we'll get started on that. If Mario will give a couple primer auto safe in there, we'll get it uh, going. Yeah. There we go, just want to run a little bit out. Got a little lock on here. And we've added our uh, priming sugar and water to this bucket. And uh, now we're gonna add our beer to it and get uh, mixed together and then we'll start bottling. Okay, so we finished transferring our beer from our fermenter to our bottling bucket. And we got our bottling device on the end of our hose or whatever the hell it's called. <laughs> And we took a sample of our beer so we can get our final gravity if I uh, get Marty to fill the table here. So I'm going to give it a little, quick little spin to kind of work the bubbles out of it. 
And we are, looks like we are at, let me stop moving, 14. So we are right on par. And uh, let's get my phone over there. I got the uh, Brewers Friend app. I'm just going to plug it in here because I am terrible at math. Looks like we'll be at uh, about 4.46 alcohol percentage, which is uh, pretty much right on money. I'm pretty happy with that, and we'll uh, get ready to start bottling. All right, so we're gonna get started bottling here, and I got my, uh, I don't know, bottling wand, I guess you can call it. I have no idea what this thing's called. I keep making things up. Just got my stubby ball here, because basically stubbies are awesome, and we'll get cracking. And you want to fill from, uh, use one of these wands to get the beer coming in from the bottom to don't mix with as much uh, oxygen. You want to kind of push it all out and have as little bit of oxygen as you can because your uh, beer will last longer. I'll hand it off to my official capper, Mad Marty. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we've uh, we're just uh, poured one bottle to test. Uh, so this, this is already preset for stubby from the last time we bottled. Uh, just and simple, you just adjust uh, before you start bottling uh, with this handle. Um, we have a bowl of uh, caps with sanitizer. Uh, sanitizer is important as we've said throughout each stage so I just uh, make sure my hands are clean. Uh, all the caps are in here, just give them a quick shake. Literally you leave about an inch of the, uh, to the top of the bottle. Line it up, and it should feel like you've got a bit of pressure there. And you just want to check, making sure that it has crimped down. It doesn't move. Look around, it's even. So that's a good capped bottle, and we'll continue on with the rest of them. Beautiful.